Okay, so now we're going to look at validity versus reliability. And this is a measurement used in epidemiology. So if you do a study and that study is always accurate, so let's say you're doing um, a DMFT score. So again, just to recap, when we're doing DMFT, let's just, um, I know we talked about it in our previous video, but DMFT um, is a way to measure how much carry someone has. So D stands for decayed, how many decayed teeth someone has. M stands for missing, how many mi um, teeth are missing because of caries, not because of wisdom teeth removal or extraction, because of caries. And F, how many teeth are filled, how many teeth have a restoration, amalgam or composite, because of caries. And then based on the numbers, so for example, if D is two, there's two decayed teeth, there is one missing teeth, and there is five um, fill teeth, the DMFT score is eight. How did I get eight? I added these numbers up. Five plus one is six plus two is eight. So that's the DMFT score. So if I were to do a DMFT score on um, my entire class and I always get the most accurate results, I'm always very accurate with my result, then this, then my um, study has great validity. It has good or high validity that the the DMFT score that I'm doing or the DMFT index that I'm using is accurate. Reliable means that if I were to do this this semester, so if I were to do a DMFT score on all my class this semester, and then I were to do it again next semester and then the semester after that, and I always get the same results, if I'm consistent with my result, that's reliability. So high reliability or good reliability is when my results are consistent. So if I measured someone and they had a DMFT score of eight, and let's say they have no treatment, and when they come back again next semester, they still have a DMFT score of eight, and I'm getting eight all the time every time I see them, you know, with with the um, with knowing that they never got their caries treated, then that is high reliability because I'm getting the same results every single time that I assess them. So. High validity and high reliability is important because we like to see, uh, when researchers are doing studies, we like to see that the index that they're using is accurate, is true. And we like to see it being accurate all the time. It's consistent. That's reliability. Then there's something called sensitivity versus specificity. And when we're talking about sensitivity, it's how many people so if I was an examiner or a researcher, how many people did I identify as actually having the disease? So for example, if I did a study on all these people and all those people had cavities, so let's say I did a DMFT score um, or used the DMFT index with all these people, all these people that um, are like these just circled with no color inside are those that have cavities. And then I just made some mistakes with three people, just three false negatives, three people that I said have cavities when they actually don't have cavities, for example. If I made a few mistakes, but overall I did pretty good, that's high sensitivity, where I was able to identify all the screened individuals who have caries with the exception of just three. That's not bad. I mean, of course, I would like to be perfect, but sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't happen. So high sensitivity is when you have few false negatives, when you have few blue, but for the most part, you did a good job, or for the most part, I did a good job and I was able to screen people who have caries. The DMFT score index um, worked for me. Specificity is when you have some false positives, where here you have a lot more. So here I've made more mistakes. Here, what I did, hey, let's say this was um, something I did, what I did was I found people who have cavities, but these people actually do not have cavities. So I was, to, if you look at the definition, the ability to identify only non-disease individuals who actually do not have the disease. So these people actually don't have caries, but I said they have caries. So when I did my DMFT, um, when I used my DMFT index, I made the mistake and I said that they have caries. And when you have so many of those, here I just have three, but when I have so many of these um, individuals that I have misdiagnosed, that's bad. That's low specificity. 
So when you identify non-disease individuals, when you identify people who actually don't have caries and you said they have caries, that's not good. And that's when we say we have low specificity. But when you have, um, we like it when you have high sensitivity, when you are able to accurately uh, diagnose people who have caries, the exception of very few errors. So if you have few errors, that's okay. But as long as for the most part, you were able to identify all screened individuals with caries, that's pretty good. So you want to be, you want to have with some with a predictive value. You want to make sure that you're able to accurately measure a disease. So I don't want this where I have inaccurately diagnosed people with caries when they actually don't have caries, right? So you want it to be um, accurate. And if it's an accurate measure, what we see is we have good predictive value. So the DMFT index is accurate it's predict it's a, it's a good predictive value the ability of the dmft score to um, measure caries with accuracy without the use of other tools so just looking with a um without using x-rays for example just looking visually if i can identify dmft or dmf index with just visually without looking at radiographs that's that means that i have good predictive value that means that the dmft index is of good predictive value Hey, few more terms, inter-rater reliability versus intra-rater reliability. The key difference is these two letters. Okay, so if I were to do a DMFT index on you, if I were to do a DMFT score on you and, and see um, how much carries you have, let's just hypothetically say that, then what's important to note is that if I say you have good inter-rater reliability, that means that Let's say this is me i was able to diagnose that you have caries let's say you came along and you helped me do the study you also were able to correctly diagnose that this individual has caries and a third person was also a third examiner was also able to correctly identify that this person has caries so if everyone agrees then we have inter good inter rater reliability inter means there's all the examiners that took um that helped out with the study all have the same results. So when two examiners, three examiners, four examiners, five examiners, they agree with the score, then that's good. That's good inter-rater reliability. We like that. When we have differences, like if someone said um, a five here and someone here said a one and I said a 10, well, that's, there's lots of discrepancies between the examiners. That's bad. This is bad or low inter-rater reliability. We like to see when everyone is consistent. Intra, so intra-rater reliability is intra means one person. So if I examined your mouth and looked at your DMFT score um, and I gave you whatever score it was, let's say I gave you a five, the next time you come, let's say you come a week again and I do it again and I also give you a five and then again when you come back I also give you a five, if I am consistent all the time, that's great. That's I have good, um, we have good intra-rater reliability. I as an examiner am consistent with my measurements. So it's very similar to um, the, this word we were looking at here, reliability. But here we're saying that one person, one examiner was consistent throughout the entire time. If I, let's say if I looked at your mouth and I gave you a DMFT score of five, you come a week later and now I give you a DMFT score of 10, and then you come a week later and now I give you a DMFT score of two, that doesn't make sense because I was not consistent with my results. And of course, during this time, you never went to the dentist to get anything uh, checked out or anything filled. So I had, I, and if I change my measurements all the time, if I change my numbers from a five to a 10 to a two, that's bad. So that's when we say we have low or bad intra-rater reliability. So to prevent everyone from having different results, we need to calibrate, right? And think about when you're in clinic, instructors need to calibrate. We need to train our instructors so that we all grade everyone the same way. Okay, and then to end this video, just um, a quick thing I wanna say about positive reversal versus uh, negative reversal. Positive reversal is when you made a change, there's a change of measurement made in, in error in a logical direction. So for example, the first time I see you, okay, so number one, the first visit when you come in, I say that you have no caries. The second time when you come in, maybe you come a week later, now I say that you do have caries, but 
this is actually not true. You don't have carries. That's known as a positive reversal. The first time I said you have no carries, and then the second time I say you have carries. Okay, that makes sense. If you didn't have carries the first time, and then the second time when you come, you could get carries then. So it's, it's, it makes sense. It's, it's logical for someone to have no carries and then get carries. But if this was incorrect, um, a dentist came and a dentist said, no, actually, you don't have caries. That when, it, when I'm incorrect, that's a positive reversal. But it's made in a logical direction. It makes sense for someone to have caries and then, uh, sorry, for someone to not have caries and then get caries. But let's look at negative reversal. Negative reversal is so change of diagnosis in an illogical direction over a period of time. So what does that mean? Let's say the first time you come in, I say you have caries. The second time you come in, I say, no, you don't have caries. And I am wrong. You actually do have caries. Do you see what happened here? I, have, I went from you have caries to you don't have caries. Well, that doesn't make sense. That's illogical. It doesn't make sense for someone to have caries and then all of a sudden it disappears without going to see a dentist. So when the diagnosis goes in an illogical direction, that is considered negative reversal. But when the diagnosis gets changed in a logical direction, because it makes sense for someone to have no caries and then have caries at the second visit, that's logical direction. But then when you're wrong, that's where the reversal term comes in because I was wrong. So that's why it's a negative reversal. Um, here I was wrong. This person does not have caries. That's why it's a positive reversal because it, the change was made in a logical direction. No caries, then caries. It doesn't make sense for me to say you have caries and then all of a sudden the caries disappeared. I mean, I know sometimes that can happen because you could be taking a lot of fluoride and that could reverse your caries. But I'm just thinking, uh, look at the grand scheme, look at it and then this is just like basically a, an example that I'm giving. It doesn't always have to be caries, for example. It could be sickness. I could say that you have no cancer and then now you have cancer. And then here I could say you have cancer and all of a sudden, no, maybe I was wrong. You don't have cancer. So sometimes without treatment, like you have, you have no cancer and all of a sudden it went away without treatment. That doesn't really make sense, right? So that's illogical.